Final Fantasy VII in seven minutes. Sort of. Everything you need to know about the story so far. Spoiler alert. Approximately 2,000 years ago, the Cetra, or Ancients, essentially served as the planet's caretakers, helping foster all life on Gaia. Things seemed pretty righteous until a massive meteorite crashed into the planet's surface and ripped a giant hole that the Cetra set out to patch up. Surprise! The meteorite contained the alien entity called Genova, or the Calamity from the Skies. Genova launches a shape-shifting rampage, basically wiping out the Cetra in one fell swoop. Bummer. Eventually, the few remaining Cetra manage to seal away Genova in the North Crater, where she lies dormant for 2,000 years. Things are pretty quiet until Professor Gast, head of the Science Research Department for the mega corporation Shinra, discovers Genova's crater, mistakes her for the last of the Cetra race, and excavates her body to begin what will eventually be called the Genova Project, a plan to recreate the Cetra. These experiments are set to take place at spooky Shinra Manor over in Old Nibelheim. A young man by the name of Vincent Valentine is hired to guard the research team made up of Gast and his assistants, Dr. Lucretia Crescent and Professor Hojo, who is sort of a dick. Vincent falls in love with Lucretia, but Lucretia ends up marrying Professor Hojo instead. The pair of scientists then decide to inject their unborn child with Genova cells and give him the name Sephiroth. Vincent objects, gets shot by Hojo, but is resurrected by Lucretia as some sort of hybrid vampire. A manpire. Anyway, Vincent seals himself in this awesome coffin, and Shinra takes Sephiroth away to headquarters. Eventually, Professor Gas finds true love with Ifalna. They have a daughter named Aerith, who is basically the last of the Cetra bloodline. Unfortunately, Hojo shows up, murders Gas because he does stuff like that, and takes Ifalna and baby Aerith to Shinra HQ. Meanwhile, war rages on the continent of Wutai, and a certain young soldier first class is making a name for himself. Over in the charming mountain town of Nibelheim, Cloud Strife and Tifa Lockhart have become lifelong friends. Just as the war in Wutai is coming to a close, Cloud tells Tifa his plan to become a soldier but vows to return and save her if she's ever in a pinch. He splits, joins soldier, does a bunch of soldier stuff for a couple years, and despite never making the first class rank, Cloud eventually gets assigned to investigate a malfunctioning Mako reactor in Nibelheim with fellow soldiers Sephiroth and Zack Fair. Now this is where shit starts to get real weird. At this point, Zack and Cloud are fast friends, and Sephiroth is their fearless leader and a legend amongst soldier ranks. Once in Nibelheim, and after a run-in with monsters being bred in the Mako reactor, Sephiroth discovers that he is in fact a super soldier created by the Genova Project. He decides that Genova must be his birth mother, and that it's his destiny to control the planet. He steals Genova's head, messes up Zack, and burns Nibelheim to the ground. Cloud manages to knock him into the Mako reactor, killing him for at least a little while. Through sheer willpower, he learns how to manipulate the livestream and creates a new body for himself at the North Crater. Gross. Hojo arrives in Nibelheim and witnessing the destruction decides that he should make an army of Sephiroth clones. He rounds up most of the survivors, including Zack and Cloud, who eventually escape. Unfortunately, Shinra catches up to them, and Zack dies protecting Cloud, bequeathing him the Buster Sword on his deathbed. Cloud decides to head to Midgar, where he runs into Tifa, who introduces him to Barrett Wallace and the terrorist group Avalanche, who are dedicated to stopping Shinra's evil...ness. After helping Avalanche bomb one of Midgar's mini Mako reactors, Cloud meets Aerith Gainsborough, a flower girl, and the last surviving Cetra. Keep up. Shinra retaliates, and in an attempt to literally crush Avalanche, they have the Turks, a group of Shinra operatives, drop the upper plate of Sector 7, killing thousands of civilians. Totally relevant. Shinra needs Mako energy to power their reactors, their weapons, and all their evil schemes, but it's becoming harder and harder to find. Legend tells of a promised land where the Mako flows like wine, but only the Cetra know where this sacred ground might be, so naturally they've had the Turks track down Aerith and kidnap her, locking her up in Shinra HQ. Cloud, Baird, and Tifa decide to bust in and rescue her. While our heroes are on their rescue mission, Sephiroth calls out to Genova, whose remains are being held in Shinra HQ. Cloud starts hearing voices, Genova reawakens Sans' head, assumes the form of Sephiroth, murders President Shinra, and flees. Cloud and company manage to rescue Aerith and decide to pursue Sephiroth. They also meet a talking lion wolf named Red 13 who wears feathers. He rules. Motorcycle chase. Red 13 takes the team to Cosmo Canyon, where scholarly cool dude Bugenhagen tells them about the livestream, which is slowly dying out thanks to Shinra. Leaving Cosmo Canyon, the team meets young ninja Yuffie, fights Genova, meets a robot cat, plays some games, kills this dude, befriends our favorite vampire, meets Sid Highwind, gets double-crossed twice, and eventually ends up at the Temple of the Ancients. Once there, it becomes apparent that Sephiroth can control folk who've been injected with Genova's cells, so he manipulates Cloud into retrieving the Black Materia, which just so happens to be the key to Sephiroth's master plan, summoning the ultimate dark magic meteor to injure the planet, allowing him an access point to absorb livestream and rule the planet. Fortunately, Aerith has her own plan. She makes her way to the center of the ancient city and prays to summon Holy, which is the only magic that can hope to defend the planet against Meteor. Unfortunately, this happens. Cloud heads in the North Crater to settle the score with Sephiroth, but instead loses his mind when Sephiroth tells him that his past has been completely falsified by none other than Cloud himself. Turns out the Nibelheim incident, the Mako poisoning, and Zack's death proved far too traumatic for Cloud and broke his little brain. 
He then created a fake past for himself where he was a soldier first class, he wasn't, and Zack Fair never existed, he totally did, and then this guy shows up and tells him that he's just another Sephiroth clone, he's not. With his mind shattered, Cloud decides to hand over the Black Materia to Sephiroth, who promptly summons Meteor. This awakens the Weapons, a biomechanical monster team who are supposed to protect the planet during catastrophic events, but instead, they just start busting up towns. Cloud falls into the livestream, Tifa and Barrett are going to be executed, and stuff generally sucks. Without Cloud, the team manages to break out of Shinra, again, and procure the high wind Sid's airship. Tifa finds Cloud and Medeal, who's gone catatonic thanks to another round of Mako poisoning, and decides to stay with him until he's back in fighting shape. When the ultimate weapon attacks, Tifa and Cloud fall back into the livestream. Once inside, they manage to make their way into Cloud's subconscious, and together they figure out what's true and what isn't about Cloud's past, proving to him that his childhood memories of Tifa are real, and that he is actually the moody dude he's always been. Meanwhile, Shinra tries and fails to take out Meteor, and Vincent finally defeats Hojo. The group heads back to the North Crater to settle the score once and for all. They fight through various forms of Genova and finally reach a nearly godlike Sephiroth. They kill that dude, and during their escape, Cloud senses that Sephiroth is still alive, and very shirtless. They have one final, final showdown, and the gang manages to rocket out of the crater just as Holy is released. Holy and Livestream join forces to destroy Meteor. Everyone lives happily ever after, until they don't. But that's for another time.